so that you so that other managers, when they join us, they'll be able to, um, or if they have to, well, we post these on YouTube after we, um, after the meeting. And so if you ever want to go back or for anybody who joins us, uh, can't join us today, they're available. Um, well, again, we're here to talk about collecting uh, our market data for the season. and. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Well, first, before I share my screen, let's quickly hear, because I know a few people have shared, shared their experience while they were sharing their name, but can anybody, would anybody like to share what their um, experience has been? Or well, I know we have a, quite a few new people, but what, what has it, what has your experience been in recording your market data? It's easy, it's tough, but go ahead, David. You, okay, there we go, unmute. It's, I find it very easy. I mean, it's very simple. Um, at the end of every market, I just give everybody a little piece of card that says the date, it has a slot for a date, it has three boxes next to the words grower, artisan, or food, and. A slot to write in their, their, their sales. And I do it 15 minutes before the market closes and then collect as I as I go along. And it's it's the simplest thing, it's the simple process, and it makes it very easy to report, put it into a spreadsheet, and you're good to go. Thanks for sharing that. David, how many um vendors do you have at your market on that? You know, we average about 25 to 30 a week. So that's a that's a fair amount of vendors. That's great that you get that return. Yeah. Anybody else like to share their experience? Go ahead, George. I find it relatively difficult because I am not a numbers person. I am not a bookkeeper. I do not have the skill set. I've been doing it for a while. Uh, Luckily enough, Loretta had set up a form for me to use and but getting it reported online, I'm just not familiar with it. I I don't know how to do it. You know, I'm so computer illiterate that I fumble through things quite regularly. Sometimes it's a hit or miss type thing. My Reporting is very accurate because I keep very fine records of all the transactions. So as far as sending it off, I just package it all, make copies, package it all, and I send it up to you guys with my spreadsheet of what I did and what each vendor did per category. Uh, Grand totals and everything else are um, online uh, with the uh, the program that was set up for me, and I ship it off. But time consuming. I'm not like I said. I'm not a numbers person. I'm more of a type of guy that just goes in and wants to get things accomplished. And I know to how to operate the market. I know how to pay my vendors. I know how to keep the reporting done on a weekly basis, uh, which is relatively easy. It's just the end of the year reporting stuff that, you know, the, all these new things that come on to play or into play on online uh, is just beyond my limited knowledge well that's thanks for sharing that george and that's exactly what i was hoping to share with everyone today is the ways that we can uh you can submit your information now i'm not sure what we're talking about mainly today is the market data which is how many food vendors you've had uh, what the total sales are um which is a little different than the double up food bucks reporting, which if we have time, we'll also talk about today, which is more, which is where the spreadsheets come into play. 
right now oh, this is this yep. is Darcy. Yeah, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I've developed over the years, and <clears throat> I have asked my my managers to fill in the blanks, and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. Um, it's really makes the end of year reporting difficult. Uh, I think that they could remember to do it if they could do it like they do double up where they report every week um, what their numbers are. But um, I'm very happy with my spreadsheet. It tracks my fees, my expenses, my, um, my numbers in terms of people coming in and coming out. I'm one of those people who can add something four times and come up with four different answers. So it's real important to me to have Excel that does the adding for me. That's great. And how many, you said your market managers, do you have, how many markets do you? I do one mile high market. So you may, and I have about between 22 and 30 vendors on a given day. Can I jump in for just a second? Um, just to remind everybody, so to clarify maybe in all our minds why we're collecting this data, because as somebody who administers grants, I hate collecting data that doesn't get used and I, I hate keeping track of stuff I don't have to. So just so you know, um, we use this data primarily to, to communicate with the state of New Mexico about how farmers markets are doing and to try to convince the state and especially NMDA to keep supporting all of you and all of us and all of our vendors. Um, this, when it comes to the double up and fresh RX, which is also tedious and also nitty gritty, that goes to making sure we can maintain these grants um, that the USDA typically gives us as well as the state of New Mexico. Um, so there's a constant conversation at the NMFMA to make sure that we're not asking for things we're not gonna use for anything. Um, so basically, if we're asking for it, we know it's a burden and we know that it's gonna get used for something to support all the work that we all do. Just wanted to jump in with that. Thanks. I think it's obvious, but I just wanted to reiterate it. Well, thanks, thanks, Kirsten. That is that is important to remember. And, and when we talk about market data, which I am gonna start sharing my screen right now so that we can look at the market data, it also, as a market manager, it really helps the market understand year to year how, how the market is doing, your individual market. And so being able to collect those numbers of vendor sales and vendor attendance helps can help your market from year to year make decisions about opening days as well as um, as what days to open when you have your the most attendance at your market. We can talk about that more as we jump in. So here we are on our New Mexico FMA.org, New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association website. And where we find the market data is um, if we go to resources and market managers, this is where there's a there's a a, a lot of really good information here for for market managers to utilize. Um, our market data section is right here. And that's where, Kirsten, you, you started us right off on the right foot. This is where this, right away we talk about why we collect the data and that's, you, we, we collect the data so we can track markets throughout the state. So we can report back, so we can go to the legislature and tell them how well markets are doing um, and also for individual markets to be able to collect their own data so that they can, they can utilize it through the year to make decisions like I was just saying. So, but the big question is how to collect market data. And so if you come to our website here, what you'll find is the instruction sheets on collecting data, which also um, are included in your market manager folders that we sent out at the beginning of the season. This is where I always come when I had a question about what, what am I supposed to collect, be paying attention to again? And so um, 
here where it says market, farmers market and mobile market managers instructions, you click there. And then there's this handy sheet on all of the data we collect. And so is this, this is, so again, this is different than the double up food bucks reporting, which is also, we try to make these are the double up food bucks reporting um, do at a separate time than the market data. And so our market data um, uh, collection forms will be coming out at the beginning of October, but they're not due until December 31st. So you have quite a bit of time still to be able to prepare the data to report. And of course, um, if you're work, if you're a market with the New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association, we we say that this data is mandatory for members, and um, part of those promotional funds that we offer for your market to be able to utilize for promotions. We hope that in exchange you'll be able to help us with this market data. Um, so the first questions, let's just jump right into it here. The first questions are really easy. You tell us about your market, the name of your market, the days that it operates, yeah, all things you know. The second, this, the second questions we ask are about the customer count. And um, rather than just having me sit here and talk at you all, can, is there anybody who would like to talk about collecting um, their customer count, how they do it, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked. This is Darcy. I have a clicker and I, I watch, I find again, my market managers are really poor at collecting this data because they get distracted by other things that are going on around them. Um, they collect data at about half the rate that I do. And then I put this into my spreadsheet every week. Um, and that's how I track it. So you take your customer count weekly, Darcy. Are there any other uh, managers here who take a weekly customer count? Every customer that comes through gets uh, ticked off on a clicker just like Darcy does. She has a clicker, I do too. I have a volunteer that does the clicking for me because I don't have time. At the end of the market day, on this form that I have that comes with the normal stuff, it asks for the customer attendance, I put that there. Also asks for the vendor attendance, which I also put that there. Then it breaks it down into the vendor attendance of uh, produce, other food vendors, and then crafts. So I put each one down. I go through and uh, find out who's doing what. I already know that. So that goes into that form. I basically put in kind of the weather observation, which is sometimes poor, sometimes great. And then, of course, the date and the market that it belongs to goes in the appropriate lines. Mm -hmm. And that goes all on this form that is asked for for the EBT form. And I put that down. And then when my vendors come to collect, because I pay each vendor every market day, I do not collect any of their uh, to, um, any of their information. Oh, George, George, hold count. on one second. You're jumping ahead. We're going to stick here with customer count and we'll get okay. to the to that in Sorry. a minute. That's, that's okay. Let's go Sorry. one at a time here so we can all stay together. Well, um, sure. Because there's a lot of information. Carol, um, I see you say you're you're clicking every week now because of with double up food bucks. Is that so you why? Why is that that you're clicking every week? Because it's just easier with the form for the double up food box to just that's just helps me pay attention. 
I see. But the and you're talking about that same form that George is talking about where we yeah, it's in. it's required. We entered the number of customers, the number of vendors, blah 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 blah. The weather. So yeah, that's a nice way to keep up with. So, yeah. oh, sorry about that. So, when I was manager, I I actually did only customer count four times a year in this same way because it is it is an onerous process and it does take quite a bit of attention and if you're shorthanded or don't have a volunteer it can be um it can be a lot of work and so on this uh form here that i'm showing you sorry for sliding it all around it describes here how you can um either once a month or on four random days during your season take a customer count and i did notice that throughout the year, you know, at certain months of the year, attendance was much higher than at other months. And so this is a nice way to get an average of your market. And so on this, this example here shows uh, four, four different customer counts. I think you utilize it, putting the date rather than customer count number one, number two, number three, and number four, putting the date is what I would usually do. So I knew when we were have, having our, what the attendance was from. And then um, this, they've, so I, on date number one, there were 200 attendees. On date number two, there were 210. And then they, I imagine this is later in the season where they only had 15 and 30 customers. And then they add them all together and then they took the average number. So on average in those four months, they had 114 attendees of with 24 weeks of market. So their annual average was 2,736 uh, uh, customers at market. And so this is, a, this is just another way to take your customer account um, that is completely acceptable. Um, were there any, does any any more uh, anyone else would like to share about their customer account or ask a question about this formula here? Carol, do you? I see you added something in the chat. Do you want to? Do you want to just share that with the group? Yeah. Well, I just think because the double up food books requires it every week. So when I looked at that in the past. I, the averaging thing, I'm not a math person either. <laughs> you know, I just, it's like, no, I, I can't. It's either, it's all or nothing, I guess for me. I can't, I have no volunteers. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would even trust some of our volunteers because if we even had any, because people get distracted and I feel like I've got it down now to where I can kind of survey, see who's just the same person wandering back and forth and not count them multiple times. You know, it's an advantage being a small market, I think, in this regard. That is an advantage. For how many customers do you have weekly, would you say, on average, Carol? Well, right now we're in a new location now. And so I feel like from this point forward, we it might make sense for us to do these um, this data collection because in the past, we haven't had consistency from year to year um, of, of vendors and things. And so... But we have um, on our high day, it was 150. Wow. 151. So um, this, this past Saturday was uh, small as far as what we were getting used to. It was only 105. So yeah, I, just to chime in about Double Up real fast, the numbers that Sarah cares about for Double Up, I want to just differentiate because there are markets that don't run double up, right? Um, what, what Sarah's looking for is the number of SNAP customers and the number of double up customers as opposed to the number of total customers, I think. No, we also have total customers. Yeah, okay. there is. So uh, Kirsten, at the top. Yeah, what, what she's talking about is on the sheets that the um, managers are asked to fill out. There's a line of information that can be put in. I never got the sense that that was mandatory information as much as a nice way to keep track. And so when I did my um, counting days, my customer count days, that's where I would put the number for the day, but I didn't take it 
it's not required, just to clarify, it's not required that every week a customer count is taken. No one's gonna ask you what the weather is at your market. The nice thing about the information at the top of that page is if, if there's ever, you, once you start getting an idea of, of how the market runs, when you have a market day that has really low attendance, you can go back and say, oh, it was raining that day. It makes sense why that one day had such low attendance. Or um, so, so I never felt that that information at the top was mandatory. It is helpful though for keeping, that, like George was saying, he keeps his, uh, he kept all his vendor counts at the top of that page. And so it, it, it was very helpful to go back and um, for market data. And the, the number that Sarah will come back at you about is the number of SNAP customers and um, whether or not there were any new, new to the program kind of customers, because those are the numbers that balance her books, just so you know. Yeah, and those are the required numbers that we have to write with each customer. So that's an easy count to take as well, because we're also taking the last four numbers of their EBT card uh -huh. on that. Could be five, I thought. The last five. Thank you, Dr. Ray. It's been a, it's been a little while since I've run an EBT card, so thank you. The last five numbers. So, um, what if there's no, is there any more questions there? We can move on to the to the next part of the information. Um, the next count we ask for is market days. How many days your market ran for? And that's, that's simple because we keep those sheets every week. You have a sheet for every week of the market. So I would just go back and count my, count my sheets, count my market sheets from each week. And you know how many days your market was open. The vendor days is where it gets a little trickier. Who, would anyone here like to, to talk about how they keep their vendor days? Um, it, and here, we'll just read through here. At the end of the season, you total up your vendor days. It's the record number of vendors that are selling. How many, sorry. I'm so sorry. We are looking for the number of days your vendors were selling at the market through the season. And so at the end of the season, what you'll do is you, You'll look at, oh, I, I studied this before we came in and now I'm getting confused. I'm confusing myself, y'all, sorry. <laughs> you look at the number of vendors yeah, that were present you. each day and you tally it all up. So if you had 12 vendors on your first market and 26 on your second and six on the fifth, and you just keep adding all those numbers up until you get a grand total. Right, so you're adding up the vendors from each, from each day at market. So, so, so here's the example here. This, this market had 10 vendors at each market and they had 24 markets. So they had 240 vendor days. And so you'll just have a vent, you'll, you'll tally up at the end of your vendor sheet, how many vendors were at that market. And then you add it up by how many markets you had. This was an easy market because they had the same number of vendors each week. Obviously our markets have different vendors each week. Are there people, folks here who have who have more than one market a week? I know that at the Silver City Farmers Market, we had a, a Saturday market and a Wednesday market. And so I would actually do com two completely separate um, uh, market data sheets for those two markets. The next, the next number, that we're looking for is the percentage of farmers and ranchers. And so you, what you would do is go back through your sheets. I, I heard uh, Carol and George both say that they actually keep that total right at the top of their um, double up food buck sheet. And so that's really easy. You can just go through and, um, and, get, and get your percentage from there. Um, I would actually go through 
um, my, I would go through the reporting that we do for Double Up Food Bucks, the vendor reporting, because all of the um, farmers and ranchers were also EBT. And at our market, you're required to have, um, to, to take EBT and Double Up Food Bucks if you're a vendor. So I could utilize that spreadsheet and see the, see how many farmers and ranchers we had at market because the crafts people weren't on there. Um, that, excuse me, um, this is Darcy. Is that um, the whole season or is that a by week, by, by the week or how are you doing that percentage? So it's, it's the whole, for the whole season. So you'll okay. add up how many total vendors You'll have your total vent. You'll you'll have see how many total vendors you have at market, okay. and then um, how many of them are farmers and ranchers. And you very good. You'll Thanks. Get there, sure. And lastly, are there any more questions on the percentage of farmers and ranchers? The last bit of the the data we ask for and is the sales figures. And we did have a couple of uh, managers already share with us the figures, how they, um, how they keep their sales figures weekly when the, um, when the vendors come and get paid out for their double up food bucks tokens. They're asked to fill out a slip. And here at the bottom of this page here online, we actually have a offered a, an anonymous slip for your vendors to fill out. Um, I'd like to hear from other managers who are, talk about how they do this. George, you were gonna share with us your procedure if you'd like to. Be more than happy to. I have this little piece of paper which I print out each market day. It gives me the date and the month and which market is going to be reporting. Each one of these slips of paper has four categories on it. One is non-produce, which includes eggs, honey, uh, bread, things like that. The next one is produce, which includes actually the fruits, veggies, chili, things like that. Then let me back up. The non-produce does the eggs, plants, meat, honey, in that category. The process and baked items come on a different line. That is for people that do the, the baking and stuff like this that bring you the breads. And then I have a craft uh, line, which is soaps, candles, restraws, because you cannot take uh, food dollars for restraws for whatever reason, because that's, People think it's just for decorative type stuff, which is in fact not. But anyway, that's how I do it. And I fill it out. The vendor comes, we pass that out during the, the market day. Go to each vendor, hand them a slip. At the end of the market day, they come to my table and put in this bucket, have a lid on it. They stick these slips of paper into it. And off I go, they get paid for what they did. And that's how I do it. And then what do you do with those numbers? How do you handle it on the other at side? The, at the end of the market year, what I do is I basically fill out a whole sheet of these things, weeks of, of the month, four weeks or five weeks, stick one week of each one on that particular line, then I gather them all up and just report whatever's necessary for reporting for that product. What are some other other managers here? What are some other, are there, will you share? This is Darcy. This? Thanks, Darcy. I have a receipt book and on that receipt, The fee that they paid, their total amount take, that, then I have a breakdown like on that sheet. Um, 
so that I know what kind of things they were selling. And then they get that receipt and for their tax purposes and I get it. Um, I then um, um, enter all that into my spreadsheet. It allows me then to uh, figure out where mistakes were made in the data collection and that I can contact the vendor that week and say, how much did you bring in this week? Or, you know, whatever it is that I, whatever data I'm missing. Um, and it, it provides a check for me. And then, and then I can run my totals again in my spreadsheet. Great, thank you. Any are there? Is there other, Carol? How do you collect that at Gallup? Honestly, I haven't. And how do you? So how do you uh, fill out that number every year? I don't. You don't. No, mm -hmm. it's been. Denise knows. Mm -hmm. It's just been a long, long-standing challenge. Yeah, at, at Silver City Farmers Market, our um, fees are based on a sliding scale. And so I had the same challenge in, um, I had a lot of vendors who were uh, reluctant to share those numbers weekly. And so what I was able to do with the sliding scale fee structure was I could go back and, and get averages at least on, um, on what they're, what their sales were. And so that helped me create to get a, a base number um, that we could at least see um, how, our, how our sales were from year to year. I think this year, Leah, who has dropped off the call, has, she's also has a slip like George's and she's, she's done a much better job at um, getting the vendors to actually give up their, their sales numbers. So those are every two. market, every market season at the beginning of the market, we have a potluck. And I explain to our vendors that attend our potluck what this particular item is for. And it is completely anonymous. There is no name, no number, no nothing else other than their handwriting. And I'm not going to go through 10,000 slips of paper and analyze everybody's handwriting for who that vendor became because I'm I don't care as long as they put in an accurate number on there I'm happy and so far I've seen it pretty close that's great I see David has his hand up too you know I have some vendors that um my longtime vendors who have been with the market for 20 15 years they give me an average and I know it's an average because it's just it's pretty much the same number every week and I'm always like hey. I have others my newcomers they will actually look at their square tablets or however their 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 logs to give me an accurate number um I take it for what it is um I come from a retail background so I look I look at those numbers personally and then I, I talk to the vendors and I those that have low numbers, I ask them, how are they marketing themselves? What are they doing to get people to the market? And how can I help them be more successful with what they're trying to do to get their word out for them? So that's how I look at it when I get these numbers. Um, I know it's anonymous uh, in terms of marketing, sending it to you all, but I feel that I'm a conduit to help these people get noticed and recognized in the community. So that way they can become successful in whatever they're trying to do. And that's how I see myself too as the market manager. So just yeah. that's a throw great that in. Point. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, David. That's a great point. It is these numbers, not only they can do they help the marketing association, they can help the individual vendors themselves when they're tracking them as well as the market as a whole. So that's, a, that's an interesting point because at Silver City Market, farmers markets, since um, the vendor fees depend on your your daily totals, we would have vendors sometimes reporting very low numbers. You know, it's easy to see that someone's selling and maybe reporting lower numbers, you can see what they showed up with. But then it also, we would, we would ask them, you know, why are you coming to market if you're not making any money? 
And so it seems like now that Leah has been, the new manager has been asking on that slip where they report ac the actual fees. It's are, the fees at Silver City Farmer's Market are $10 um, if you make under $200 and then it's 5% uh, of sales up to $600. So the most anybody ever pays is uh, 30 bucks to be at market. Um, and and then we, we do have vendors who make over a thousand dollars at market mm -hmm. weekly. And I always feel like that whoever's making, the people who pay the $10 amount for 200 or under and the people who are making over a thousand, when I was working out those annual sales with that sliding scale, it worked itself out to a pretty good average. Mm -hmm. And and then, the, and it, at the end of the year, it's nice to be able to give the vendors their total number for the year. For yeah. some vendors, I was able to tell them from their fees how they could see how much they had made throughout the year. I have a question. Yeah. Um, can you tell me why you charge fees at your market? Because we pay our manager and um, we, we pay for advertising and um, we pay the insurance for the market. And, and so those fees help us to, to, to pay for all those things. So we used to have a volunteer manager um, before the Double Up Food Bucks program. And then when that program became so popular and there was, you know, there's the, there was the weekly reporting and all the other pieces, of course, we needed to pay someone to do that. And so the vendors, well, our market is a vendor run market, the Silver City market, farmer's market. So the vendors are making all of the decisions and they, they recognized how important it was to have someone who was being paid to do, to do that job. And then like David's saying, you have someone on your, who is actually there to look out for the, for the vendors. I saw my job the vendors were there to take care of the customers and I was there to take care of the vendors. I'm gonna share my screen again because I wanna go back to George's um, concern about online reporting. And I'm going to, we don't have our reporting, um, we don't have the, the page that you can print up or the form that you can fill out online to put your numbers. We'll have that up at the beginning of October. We don't have that up online yet, but I do have them so I can show you what they look like. So if you have any questions, we can um, we can take care of that now. So- um, To come from your market. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I missed that. What was the question? Or I heard someone talking, maybe it was just background. So, so here's the, form George that you can print up and mail in. Of course, we'd, we'd much rather, it's much easier on our end if the reporting is online, but we understand that not everybody has the capability or the technical background to be able to do that. So when the forms are ready, we'll have this printable version online and you can see the questions are just the same as what we just went over on the instruction sheet. Just fill in here, what is your first and last name? What is your email address? All very simple to fill in. And then as you go on, it'll ask you what is the pr approximate percentage of vendors that, you're, that are mostly farmers and ranchers. We're not gonna give you those formulas here we're going to hope that you're going to go back to that instruction sheet and work the, with the instruction sheet along with this um, with this form. And so here is where you can put in the grand total of visitor count, your agricultural sales, non-agricultural sales. And then we have some questions here about how much you pay your market manager as well. Those, we didn't hit those on the sheet. These are, these are on the form itself. And so I think it was that for that same question, was it Donna who asked that? Um, what, what is your market manager getting paid and how much? And that helps us know, you know the capacity that markets have every year. 
And then last year we had these questions. Um, did you invite vendors to pay the fee for the entire season? And uh, some markets can do that and other markets can't. And then did you, do you ask your vendors to pay a daily fee? I think some market markets don't even, um, some markets don't ask for fees from their vendors. And that's really you know, a nice thing if, if, you can, if your market can run that way. Um, so this is the offline form that you can print up off the website and mail in. And then um, let's see, here is, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. We don't have it up and running yet. Here's the online form that we'll send out through email or you can reach it through our website on that page I was showing you on the website. And um, I'll quickly show you what, what it looks like to fill in the information. So the information is, is really just these information or the, when we ask the questions, there's just these blanks that we ask you to fill in like an online form with the same information that I showed you on that offline form. Total number of days your farmer's market was open. And so it's pretty straightforward. You just go and you answer the question, you, you follow the questions, you, you answer in the blanks, and then there'll be a box that says next. And that's not showing up on here because I couldn't actually access, the form's not actually ready yet. And so you'll just hit next and then you'll go on to the ser next series of questions. And then when you're done answering all each of the questions, there'll be a submit option and you'll hit submit and then it'll send the information back into us. SurveyMonkey doesn't let us share the information that you sent. Um, we, we can't, we, we won't be able to send that information back to you. So we also ask that you keep that for your own records as well, if you like it, like to keep that. Are there any questions about this forms, either of these forms? I'm sorry, I'm- I can't actually see your form. Oh, no. The Are form not... size is this size right here. My, you can see my hand. Oh, this is a size I see. I can't do any reading. Uh, because you're I'm on, on your phone. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm sorry about that. Was that, did anybody else have that problem? They can't actually see the forms. It's all very straightforward uh, online form responses. George, you're welcome to mail in, like I said, print up and mail the sheet if that's easier for you, by all means. I'll I have a, a couple of questions. Did I hear you say that we will not be able to go back and look at a previous week? No, that was just that form. Once you submit the form, SurveyMonkey won't send you your answers. Oh. But can you go back and look at what you entered the previous week? This is just once a year you have to send. Oh, it. okay. Yeah. All right. This, Very good. This is just this. This. So our the, the data collection is just is an annual data collection. Okay. Will be the second question is I have an assistant manager that I pay. Um, is this and I have a marketing person that I pay. Um, do you want to know about that information? That's a great question. Um, because that more that's more about how much is the market spending on. In right. general. But thanks for bringing that up, Darcy, because we might read. I'll, I'll, I'll find out if we need to reframe that question. OK, sounds what good. Market spend on employees rather than just on the manager. Yeah. Right now, as it stands, it asks, are, are you paying a market manager and how much are you paying them? So I would just answer that question as it is. Don't forget to record your marketing masseuse and how much you pay her every week to give you a massage after the market. Really important data. <laughs> 
What about trades that you do? So I, I don't charge a fee to a vendor who helps me set up and things like that. Right, we're, we're uh, I, you, won't, you won't need to let us know that. I think what the vendor fee questions were more about um, how vendors are charged. Are they charged weekly or do you charge an annual fee for vendors? Thank you. Sure. Anna, you joined us late. I just wanna say hi and welcome. Oh, and I see there's a question in the chat. Anna, did you have any? Yes. Hi. How are you guys? Um, no, I think I. I mean, I did uh, did that last year, so I just wanted to see where we are. It's the first, and I think uh, first time that I was able to manage to be on somewhere on time to to join. But it's it looks like a very valuable um, sessions, so I just wanted to join in. Thanks. And. We'll have this, uh, we're recording this and we'll have it available on YouTube if you wanted to go back. And yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We have about seven minutes left. I'm wondering if um, there's a, I, I'd like to field questions here for anyone who, who who's still feeling confused or that they need more help or um, have another uh, market and uh, year end market data collection question. This is Brian. Um, David, I, I see your comment in the chat. Can you um, just explain that a little bit? Oh, I just, I, I was just, I was, I'm looking through the website. I was, I found it interesting because I'm like mobile messaging. Hmm, what do they mean? But the link doesn't work. So I don't know what you mean by that. That's our, our Good Food New Mexico um, program. And and I'll, yeah, well, I, I just responded to you as well, David. We'll okay, fantastic, thank we'll you. We'll post a link to you. Thanks for, anytime you're on our website and you find anything's not working or outdated, it's so helpful if you let us know. Thank you so much. Well, if there's no more questions about market data, um, we can also, Kirsten is here to talk about um, if there's any more double up food box reporting questions. Um, we have some, a little bit of time. I know that we had a meeting last week and we got real in depth in that. And I don't participate in the double up food box program. Our, our market does not, so yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's good to know. Um, and lastly, um, we have, there's one more survey that will come out in mid-November and it's our annual member survey that we send out to all of our members. And so all of you are here today, I believe because you are a member of the New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association. <coughs> That's the third. I remember I used to get really confused at the year end because we had the double up food box reporting we had our annual data, and then there was this third member survey that came out. And so, um, we're, again, we're trying to stagger those so they're all not happening at the same time. Um, but there are those three surveys to fill out. We really appreciate all of that information. It helps us um, understand how we're helping you and how we can help you better. I, I, have, I have a question. Uh, about, but that would not be about the data. It's actually, um, cause my little market from Chama, uh, it's, um, I'm doing it as a person right now. And I would like to know where can I get help to, um, how should I structureize it? Like, like, should I already, because I think the double up uh, or some other programs that they're, I should not be doing this as a person. So I think I would be ready to like progress in the organizational uh, process, but I, I'm, I'm new to the to states and, and, and I'm kind of new to everything here. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know where, what kind of forms I can 
uh, build, I guess. Oh, so to be able to collect the information or are you uh, no, no 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 like a structure manage? structure like right now what i'm doing this and and you know it's a very risky situation we're not we, i'm doing basically as a service right now i'm not really uh, earning any money and and but but there is a potential and and i'm more thinking about the digital way of promoting the farmers as well i just want to get um, you know, as a third year will be the, our next year. So this year was kind of sloppy because I was just so um, so tired and I was actually uh, traveling. But but I think I am prepared for the third year, and I would like to maybe have somebody to talk to that is like just uh, more efficient when it comes to legal and 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 uh, tax taxes and then like how to structureize. Great. Yeah, well, I have I have two points and I see George has his hand up as well. And so maybe he'll have also some information to help you. Um, I'm happy to help you. Our, our meeting's almost over here. So I'd be happy to talk yes. to you one-on-one, -on -one, Anna, to help you. Mm -hmm. um, and also I'm going to recommend that you come to our annual meeting in March I believe it's the first week of March this year March 8th in that okay. time and it's three days where all the managers come statewide and um bye Carol thank you I see your note there sorry Carol's jumping off um mm -hmm. all the managers come state from the state and it's such a wonderful time to not only get all of this information in person talk to managers about how they're doing things and and make connections. Back. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that I think that because we haven't had that in person for the last two years, a lot of new managers are feeling how you feel. Right. That that what actually is going on because I know I learned so much at that in person meeting and it's just so much harder to get anything uh, oh, I would love to attend, of course. Yeah. So, and you're a member, you're, you're a member yes. of the Farmers yes. Marketing Association. So you'll get that invite as soon as we send the invites out here. That I think is the best way to get that information. I'm also going to put um, my email address here in the chat so that we can connect. Anna and I can help you. And uh, George, you go ahead. I know you had, you had your hand up. I would suggest that you get together with your farmers, growers that you have at your market and make up a set of rules and regulations for your market. That is a very important process that everybody should have for their market or a market that they operate. And then your, your forms are so much easier to do you have also an application, which in we have two, two forms. Number one is the rules and regulations. Everybody that asks for an application, they get the rules and regulations, which they keep. And I suggest that they read through it completely. Then the uh, market application indicates what kind of a vendor they are, their name, their address, all the personal information that's necessary for a market manager in my particular case to go out and visit their farm to make sure that it is they that are growing the crop for what they're doing or baking or whatever the process is that they're going through, uh, dairy, uh, meats, whatever it is. That we, to, George, to we, we, we do have all that, it's just, uh, I'm talking about the legal structure of the of of is it a nonprofit? Is it a person or is it a co-op? I'm investigating all those things and because now I'm I'm just it's my market. Like I I I I came here, I started to live here, I decided to do the market, I did the market and but I don't want this to be attached to my because of the liability issue. So it's it's more of that um that question. Uh, because again, I'm kind of doing it by myself, but I, I could use the knowledge of all of you uh, to to just not reinvent the wheel. 
Well, I believe the NMFA may could assist with that, but I would suggest you form an LLC for yourself for the market. Oh, LLC is the best? I think so. Okay. Because going in as a nonprofit, it takes a long time and quite a bit of expense in order to form an LLC to offer any any formal protection for you. The LLC will kind of help you out with that particular legal issue. Um, yeah, and, and that, does, does the farmer's market uh, association, I mean, New Mexico have these kind of uh, maybe like a analysis of best to, uh, best um, uh, tech, not how do you say best uh, techniques uh, forms of what is works better because I can see Kirst, uh, Kirsten you your answer that some of they do this some of they do that uh, it really, what, I think it's I think it really depends on your specific situation so do have a good conversation with Andrea and then she can elevate it if she needs to to talk to others I will. I only know this because I enter data from every, like all the double up markets. And I'm telling you, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to structure your market out there. And they seem to work for different communities in different ways. So that's everything from a local government helping you and sponsoring you to an outside organization that's already a nonprofit to people running them for profit. Um, and I guess it's really based on your specific situation. Um, okay, I think you're right to want to do something. That's, that's where you start. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yes, yes. I, Andrea, thank you for your email. I will definitely reach out. Please do. Yeah, I'm glad that you joined in today because we're, we're happy to help you. And um, if you'd like to stay on a minute, and I'm just going to, um, to make sure as we're at 104 here that there's no other questions about our topic market data today before we sign off. And I wanna thank everyone. No, I don't see, I don't see any questions. I'm gonna thank everyone for joining us today and um, feel free to reach out to me as well if you have any um, questions going forward about market data or any other um, questions you have about your market here at the year end. And um, we'll, our next uh, market manager lunch in November will be on um, promotional funds and how to report those. Cause it'll be, I'm sorry, October, excuse me, in October. Um, and we'll be sending out the links and the dates to that um, shortly as well. Um, but we'll be talking about specifically how to get reimbursed for the um, promotional funds that you've spent through the year. And I know new market managers can use some help with that. Even returning ones can use help with that. So I look forward to seeing you all next month. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. You want me to stay, uh, Andrea? Or? Um, or you can reach out to me, Anna. Okay, I will, I will email you. And then we can maybe uh, do um, like a pri 